So far we talked about where in the spectrum a particular rotational line would occur, but here we're going to talk about the intensity of a rotational absorption or emission line, and also we'll uh, talk about the spacing. Let's first talk about intensity. There are two factors uh, which govern the intensity. One is the population of energy levels, and the second is the quantum mechanical integrals. Let's first look at the population. So as we said, the selection rule for uh, rotational spectroscopy, delta J is equal to plus or minus one. Let's look at these energy levels here. We'll discuss this in more detail when we talk about statistical thermodynamics, but if we order the energy levels this way, and this is a lower energy level, what you find, sort of makes sense, is that you have more molecules in the lower energy states than you do in the higher energy states. There's a distribution of molecules across the energy states. That's called the Boltzmann distribution. We'll talk more about that in statistical thermodynamics. But what this means is that you're looking for, say this is J equal 1, J equal 2, 3, and 4, and so on. If you look at a transition going from J equal 1 to 2, there are more molecules that can make that transition compared to the transition going from 2 to 3 and then from 3 to 4. So you would expect as you go across uh, the spectrum here from this effect, this will be the intensity on this axis and this will be energy, that the lower energy states will be in more intense simply because there's more molecules available to go with the lower energy transitions and then as you go to higher energies you would have less intense lines. So we expect something like this for uh, distribution of intensities. That's the effect of uh, selection uh, rules and the fact that you have distribution of systems in the energy. You have more uh, systems in the lower energy than the higher energy. The second contribution to the intensity is this quantum mechanical integral. Recall that uh, we defined a transition dipole moment to be equal to this integral over all space of the wave function of the final state, complex conjugate, times the dipole moment times the wave function of the initial state integrated over some volume space. Now if this integral is small, that means you have a weak intensity. And conversely, if it's large, this implies you have a strong intensity. All right, so these two factors are govern the intensity of an absorption line. Now let's look at uh, in more detail the spacing of the rotational lines. If you actually go do an experiment, you'll find that the of the pure rotational lines, you'll find that pure rotational spectral lines are not equally spaced. We said that uh, the intensity versus frequency or energy, we would have some lines. We know that the intensity of these lines now is not equal, but we'll just draw them here equal. We said that in our model, they're separated by a spacing 2b. And all of these, uh, this would be 2b, 4b, 6b, and so on. All of these lines, these absorption lines or emission lines, if you want to talk about that, will be equally spaced. But in fact, what you find is they're not equally spaced. So what you say is that, oh, you have what's called centrifugal distortion. So the bond is not really a bond that you would find in a rigid rotator. In other words, the bond is not constant. But as you go to higher and higher rotational energy states, the molecule is spinning more quickly, and therefore the bond stretches. That's called centrifugal distortion. And what one takes into a, the way one that takes into account centrifugal distortion is to add this additional term to energy. Here we have the spectroscopic constant B. And now here we have another spectroscopic constant. We'll call that dj. 
And I uh, wonder if it's uh, place records. And uh, we have instead of j, j plus 1, we have j, j plus 1 quantity squared. So we're adding a squared term to take care, uh, to take into account then centrifugal distortion, distortion. Now, if you're wondering more about this, you'll be able to measure, in fact, the spectroscopic constants B and D for hydrochloric acid uh, when you actually take chemistry 455 experimental physical chemistry. So there you'll learn more about these uh, terms you have to add on because our model of a rigid rotator it no longer holds up. The actual bond length varies with uh, rotational quantum number.